Welcome to module two of making your very own Choose Your Adventure mobile game using BuildBox AI. I'm Henry Fransu, and in this module, you're gonna learn how to edit your game and how to export it to BuildBox World. Let's get right into it. Now, to pick up where we left off, I'm here on my Game Over UI screen. And just for a quick review to, so you guys know where to access your UI screens from, you can click on this button here in the top left, and this is opening up what we call our mind map. This is where all of your UI screens connect to each other, and it makes your Choose Your Own Adventure game what it is. Um, all that, that you see here with all this visual code, this was all generated by the AI in uh, our previous uh, module, in module one, where I showed you how to create your entire Choose Your Own Adventure game with your AI. And yeah, today I'm going to be focusing on editing your game. So you can access your Game Over UI from up here. Let me zoom in a bit. There we go. Uh, your Game Over UI right here. You can double click on that. It'll open it right up. There you go. And um, today I really wanted to focus on this generate asset function that you can access from the left side of your UI editor here. Um, you can get as intricate as you want with this. Um, if you click on the gear icon here, you can enter your prompt on what you want to see from the AI. So let's say if we're generating a background, for example, say I don't like my game over screen background right now. Um, I'm going to say I want a clock that looks like it's part of a time machine. Then you can enter things you don't want to see here. I can't think of many things I don't want to see, so I'm just going to leave it at that for now. And you can choose your aspect ratio. In this case, since we're making a mobile game, I would make the aspect ratio a portrait. And you can choose transparent background or not. Since I'm making a background, I don't want a transparent background, so I'm going to uncheck that option. And you can just hit generate. I already generated mine in advance here, just for convenience. So if you go into your history here, this is where all of my clocks came up. So it's going to give you four options that you can choose from. Um, I think I'm going to choose this one, honestly. This kind of looks cool. It's a nice clock design, very detailed. So your image is right here. You can just drag it and add it in as an image. So I'm going to add it in as your... Uh, just add it into your UI screen here. Um, we're going to delete our other background here. So just click on it. Click delete simply. And we're going to want to add this to, or sorry, we're going to want to send this to the back of our screen here. So we're just going to simply do a right click and we're going to click send to back. Then that's going to send it to the back of our screen and we can resize this as we would like. Ooh, just resize it for our screen. And there we go. Now we have our fully replaced background. So if that's what we want, we can add that in right there, all through this generate assets function on the side. Now that generate asset tool is actually very helpful if you're wanting to replace some of your backgrounds that the AI has already generated for you. Um, it just adds a bit of your own personal input into the individual screens inside of the game. So it's very useful for that. And you can also create individual icons that can act as characters or UI elements and such. Um, and another thing you might want to be changing inside of your game is your text. So in scene three here, for an example, you can see this bit of text here is actually floating um, beyond the button. Um, you can kind of see it hanging over top of the button there. So to fix that, it's very easy. You just click on the text and you can actually crop it to fit inside of the button. Now, in some cases such as ours, I'm thinking that we're going to need to resize the button entirely so that the text here can fit inside of the button perfectly. So we're going to want to click our button here and just make it larger. Boom, there we go. So you can just scale around with the different elements on the screen. So you make sure everything fits inside of it. The AI, the AI has already done all the hard work and it's routed the buttons to the different screens like you saw in our mind map there. So there might be some cases where you might just need to resize some things just to make sure it looks nice. Just give it a bit of polish. Now, another thing I touched base on in module one, but I haven't actually added in yet was a... Uh, a social media button that most people like to add that in so um, their players can keep up with them on social media and stuff like that. So by adding in this button, your players are going to be able to stay up to date on the new games that you're going to be creating. Um, and to do that, you want to go to our buttons tab on the side here. This is my main menu, by the way, so make sure you navigate to your main menu if that's what you want in your button. Um, so add in your URL button here from the side. Just drag it on here. And it's going to look a little bit like this. You can add in an image on the side here. So whether that be a TikTok I icon or something like that, add in whatever you want. Um, just for an example here, I'm going to add in just a random button, just like this one here. Just a random blue button. Uh, oops, did not add it in. There we go. 
Just an, just another blue button like that. Um, I'm just gonna make mine smaller for now. I'm just gonna add this in as an example. Um, I'm just gonna put this down low. And down here at the bottom right, you can see the URL section here. So this is where you're gonna put um, your URL to the social media profile or website, whatever you might wanna add into your game, you wanna put it there. Um, for my example here, I'm gonna link my TikTok page. So I'm gonna copy that link there and I'm just gonna add it into the game. And I'm gonna show you in a second when I emulate this game on my phone. Um, and that link should be working for us. And yeah, so that's how you add in a URL button to your UI screen. Now that we've added a couple more things into this game, I'm gonna to want to try it on my phone. And you may be wondering, how can I simulate this game on my phone? Well, it's actually extremely easy. You just click this button in the top right here that says export to Buildbox World. Give that button a click and it's gonna quickly save your project. And it's gonna bring up this screen here. And you can name your game, name it whatever you want. Um, what was our name for our game again? Uh, the AI named our game ChronoQuest. So I'm just going to enter that in for our export as here. Uh, ChronoQuest. There we go. Perfect. Um, and then right here, you can click if you want to enable global share or not. If you enable global share, that means everyone around the world can play your game who also has a Buildbox World app, which I'll get into more in a second. Um, the AI already created this icon for us, which is awesome. That actually looks pretty cool, considering that this is a time travel game. So app icon is already made for us. So we have ChronoQuest here. Um, and I'm just going to turn off global share for now, just because it's much quicker if you just want to quickly test something on your own device, uh, just to turn that off for now. Um, so I'm going to keep that off for now, and I'm just going to quickly press export. And it doesn't take long at all, so look here. We're already just about there, exporting. And there, boom, success. It's already there. So now I'm going to open up my phone here on my computer, and we should be able to test it out on my phone. Let's give it a try. And there we go. My phone is now on the screen. That's perfect. Um, so this is a BuildBox World app. Um, on the home screen here, you're going to be greeted with a bunch of different apps here. Uh, these are all games made by developers that use the same software. They go through the same process that you guys do in making their games, and they decide to share them globally. So you can play these if you want, but in this case, we're going to go over to the My Bits section here at the top, and there we go. There's our game file right there. So if we give, give it a click there, it's going to load us right into there. It doesn't take much time at all. And there we go. So there we go. Our game's right there. Um, we want to try out the new things we added first. So I'm going to test out the social media button I added. So I'm going to click that blue button on the bottom. And let's see what happens. There we go. It works perfectly. So it brings us right to my social media page there. Uh, that's my TikTok page right there. As you can see, that's the one we linked earlier. And that's perfect. So now we're going to speed through here. I'm going to speed through my game so we can see if our AI our AI background we added in at the beginning is actually there at our uh, finished game screen or uh, game over screen. So I'm going to speed through this and let's see what happens. And there we are, as you can see, the AI image that we generated at the beginning of this video and added into our game over screen, it's right there in our simulation, which is perfect. So now that we're done here in our simulation, you can just click the top left button and it boots you right out of your game back into your bits. And there you go, that's how you run a simulation on your phone. And that concludes the final module to this tutorial. You should now have your very own choose your own adventure mobile game that you can access directly from your phone. And if you want to know how to export to iOS or Android, we have tutorials on that link down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.